Hi, my name is Rob Lane, and I'm working on my Master's of Data Science at Southern Methodist University. Today I'm going to talk about a specific type of adversarial attack, commonly used to defeat and confuse computer vision machine learning models, the fast gradient sign method. Let's start today's talk with a brief history of how we got to where we are today. The work for artificial neurons was made by Warren McCullough and Walter Pitts in 1943. Their purpose was to bring about a simplified model of biological neurons for binary classification. Their work was used by Frank Rosenblatt in 1958 to build a perceptron, which in turn provided the groundwork for later, more complicated networks. Deep learning was developed by Alexei Ivakenko and Valentin Lapa in 1965, which involved training models with multiple layers. They called it group method of data handling, but the term deep learning was later applied to their type of model. Convolutional Neural Networks, or CNN for short, were first developed around 1980, but were not able to be efficiently implemented at the time because of computing constraints. Their key contribution is the ability to capture spatial hierarchies in data. Backpropagation is an efficient method of training what is scored at the output layer back through all the previous layers in hopes of nudging the model forward towards reduced loss over multiple iterations. Generative adversarial networks, central to this presentation, were introduced by Ian Goodfellow in 2014. This involves training two models against one another, which we'll delve into in a bit. Because computer vision is ultimately related to human vision but not quite the same thing, it's apt to use an analogy of ways that we can confuse human eyes. Camouflage offers a pretty good analogy because it does in fact confuse human eyes. To my eyes, a tiger seems poorly camouflaged against a background of green foliage. This is partly because, through natural selection, there was little pressure to select traits that hide well to eyes that can tell the difference between orange and green. But to a tiger's typical prey, this difference is much harder to distinguish. Because they can't tell the difference in color, as shown in this photo, they rely on a different signal. And we can see that the tiger is relatively well hidden in this case. A paper from Rob Payne shows one advantage that colorblindness can have, search and rescue. Because some people have limited ability to distinguish between colors, they instead learned a different pattern for recognition. And in those cases, they can end up being less distracted by color noises and instead notice a di different pattern. Colorblindness is thus useful for seeing the intensity of color instead of its hue in the textile industry, as well as spotting camouflage in a field or forest that most of us wouldn't notice. Most people, when introduced to adversarial attacks, remark at how small a change can be that would result in an, a drastically different characterization of an image. We have to remember here that machine learning models see differently than we do. This final analogy is one of my favorites. Dazzle camouflage was experimented with by several world powers between World War I and World War II. While this type of camo may make initial identification of a foe easier, the point of it is to make visually estimating range, and especially heading, much more difficult. You can see how it has the potential to confuse in this artist's rendering from 1922. It's actually fairly difficult to quickly discern just where the ship's bow is. This is a good demonstration, therefore, of how adding noise to the right places can successfully confuse a model. Next on the agenda, I'll go over the basics of a generative adversarial network. A generative adversarial network, or GAN for short, is a deep learning tool that pits two competing models against one another, hence the term adversarial. The generator creates new fake images out of random noise and tries to make data which is indistinguishable to a model as to whether or not it is fake. The discriminator then classifies the data samples as either real or fake. Essentially, the generator creates believable lies, and the discriminator tries to detect those lies. The process of training this tool is not too different in concept to training two separate models. The process starts with real data samples that are all genuine. Normalized random noise is then generated to serve as generator input. The following steps are then repeated until stopping criteria are reached. 
Real data and generated data are fed into the discriminator. The discriminator adjusts its weights in its layers based upon misclassification of real or fake. This helps the overall model get better at identifying genuine data. Each time the generator is trained again, it starts with a new batch of random noise. It updates its weights in the same ways as other deep learning models with a combination of loss function and backpropagation, which is used as a feedback loop that helps it learn in a way that's analogous to human learning. The discriminator and generator are typically trained in the same iteration, but do not update at the same time. They typically alternate rounds within each iteration so that each get a chance to learn and update their respective weights. It's critical to tune the training procedure so that neither side becomes overly dominant. If one side dominates the other too fast, the other side won't be able to meaningfully learn. That ultimately makes both sides less effective after iterations are complete. Since each competing model results in hopefully iterative improvements against the other, convergence is often assumed to be reached when the loss function oscillations reduce in magnitude. And now for loss functions. The discriminator's loss function can be described as the negative of the expected log probability that the discriminator correctly classifies real data samples as real, plus the expected log probability that the discriminator correctly classifies generated data samples as fake. The generator's loss function can be described as the expected log probability that the discriminator classifies generated data samples as real. Note here that the generator is only graded upon its ability to fool the discriminator with fake data, but the discriminator is graded upon correctly classifying both real and fake data. And this is an expression of how the combined loss can be expressed. Now that we have a high-level understanding of how GANs work with their adversarial process of a generator trying to create realistic data and a discriminator trying to distinguish it from real data, let's shift our focus to another application of adversarial concepts in machine learning, adversarial attacks. While GANs use adversarial training to generate realistic data, adversarial attacks exploit vulnerabilities in machine learning models by introducing small, carefully crafted perturbations in the input data. These perturbations are often imperceptible to humans, but can cause models to make incorrect predictions with high confidence. Adversarial attacks exploit the vulnerabilities in machine learning models by taking advantage of the way that these models learn and make predictions. They highlight the model's weaknesses and provide valuable insights into how models can be fooled. This is particularly concerning in applications where accuracy and reliability are critical, such as in autonomous vehicles, healthcare diagnostics, and security systems. Part of the underlying problem is that neural networks, by closely fitting very complicated data, are quite prone to overfitting the data instead of capturing generalizations that ultimately would make them even more useful. These examples of adversarial attacks demonstrate some of the small changes that can alter the output of a model. The top example demonstrates adding an amount of noise which is wholly imperceptible to a human but which greatly alters the diagnosis. In the middle, we see that changing a single pixel confuses the model into seeing a red light instead of green. And in the bottom, misspelling two words changes the outcome of sentiment analysis. In exploring methods for generating adversarial examples, Several techniques are frequently discussed in the literature. One of the foundational approaches is the fast gradient sign method, or FGSM, which operates on the assumption that deep neural networks, DNNs, exhibit high linearity. This method introduces perturbations in a single step to create adversarial examples. Building on FGSM, the iterative FGSM, or IFGSM, enhances the attack by applying multiple iterations, which typically increases both the effectiveness of the perturbation and the computational requirements. This iterative approach aims to refine the adversarial example progressively. The projected gradient descent, or PGD, method further extends FGSM by incorporating a random initialization step before performing iterative perturbations. This added randomness helps in finding more effective adversarial examples. These methods highlight different strategies to exploit vulnerabilities in DNN models, emphasizing the balance between attack strength and computational resources. 
work on FGSM attacks has shown that it can successfully confuse a model in at least one class with as few as 400 attempts. This is an effective method of attack in part because its simplicity requires fewer lines of code, which also means that a basic attack can be implemented more quickly than more advanced methods. FGSM requires access to the actual model, including its architecture, parameters, weights, loss function, and gradient information. This information is used to compute the gradients needed to create adversarial perturbations, optimizing the attack efficiently. Consequently, FGSM is classified as a white box attack. White box attacks are typically used to identify and understand the vulnerabilities of a model with the goal of improving its robustness against potential external black box attacks. In white box attacks, the attackers have complete access to the model's internal workings. Because they can understand the model's architecture and parameters, they can generate precise adversarial examples that exploit specific weaknesses. White box attacks like FGSM are thus invaluable for researchers and practitioners who aim to harden their models against adversarial threats. In black box attacks, the attacker only has access to the model's input and output without knowledge of its internal structure. These attacks, therefore, often require more queries to the model to infer its behavior and generate adversarial examples. Black box attacks can then be mitigated by techniques such as limiting the number of queries or adding noise to the outputs. The requirement for detailed model access in FGSM underscores the importance of securing models used in production environments. Many widely used tools, such as OpenCV, provide models with pre-trained weights for various computer vision tasks. While these pre-trained models offer significant convenience and performance benefits, they also pose several risks. First, the risk of exposure. If the details of these models are exposed, attackers could potentially perform white box attacks like FGSM to disrupt the model's functionality, even in production. Models available in libraries like OpenCV often come with pre-trained weights. These weights can be an attack vector if not properly secured. And with layer exposure, even partial access to the first few layers of a model can be enough for an attacker to craft effective adversarial examples affecting the model's output. Unlike typical model training which attempts to minimize loss, adversarial attack methods like the fast gradient sign method instead aim to maximize the loss function. The loss function of this can be expressed with the mathematical formula on the left. In this context, j of x and y is the loss function used to train the model, where x is the input data and y is the true label. The argmax function seeks the input x that maximizes the loss, thereby causing the model to make incorrect predictions. The actual calculation of the perturbation vector n is used to create the adversarial example that can be expressed by the formula to the right. Epsilon is a constant that determines the magnitude of the perturbation. This constant is a hyperparameter that can be tuned to control the degree of alteration to the input data. Since these types of attack intend to get the most misclassification with the least modification, this figure is typically quite small. Nabla xj of x and y represents the gradient of the loss function j with the respect to the input x given the true label y. All we really need here is the sign of the gradient in the steepest direction. And because epsilon is a constant, it's not calculated each time. So the magnitude of change is always the same with FGSM. And that's one of the critical components that makes this attack so efficient. Let's look at a quick example of FGSM in action. Here we see the input data, modified data, and classification results of an FGSM attack on the same data with different parameters. The top row is a fairly typical example. There is one iteration and an epsilon of 0.03. The middle row shows the results of five iterations. The epsilon is the same magnitude, but the difference is that the direction of the perturbation vector is improved through a few iterations. The bottom row goes back to a single iteration, but increases epsilon to a much larger figure. We can see that this level of perturbation yields results that fool the model a majority of the time. However, when zooming into a closer look, we can see that high epsilon values yield a change to the data which is no longer imperceptible. I've added a zoomed in image to the right to show that the third row of data has noticeable splotches missing from the handwriting examples. In conclusion, Adversarial attacks such as the fast gradient sign method have profound implications for the field of machine learning and deep learning. Through the lens of adversarial attacks, we gain a deeper understanding of the vulnerabilities inherent in our models and the importance of developing robust defense mechanisms.
FGSM well exemplifies how seemingly imperceptible perturbations can lead to significant misclassifications in machine learning models. This underscores the necessity of incorporating robust training techniques and continuous evaluation to enhance your model reliability, especially in critical applications like healthcare diagnostics, autonomous vehicles, and security systems. This exploration began with a historical overview of key advancements in neural networks leading to the development of generative adversarial networks, or GANs, and the pivotal role of adversarial training. I provided a few analogies to help put the core concepts of adversarial attacks into more understandable examples. These include natural and military camouflages intended to hide, and dazzle camouflage intended to confuse, which is especially relevant to the topic at hand. We briefly explored two related adversarial attacks which are based on FGSM, iterative FGSM and projected gradient descent. The comparison between white box and black box attacks highlighted the different levels of access required and the corresponding implications for model security. Understanding and mitigating adversarial attacks is crucial as we continue to advance in the field of artificial intelligence. By leveraging techniques like adversarial training and robust optimization, we can build models that not only perform well on standard datasets, but also exhibit resilience against adversarial perturbations. The insights gained from studying adversarial attacks provide a valuable framework for enhancing the robustness of machine learning models, ensuring their safe and reliable deployment in real-world applications. As we move forward, the ongoing research and development in this area will be instrumental in fortifying our models against the evolving landscape of adversarial threats. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative. I'll leave you with the references used, which will also be copied into the video notes on this page.